My name is uh, Jason Benkoski. I'm a physicist at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. For paints, most people think about them in terms of uh, just appearance, trying to make things look a certain color. But really, most of the time when you're using a paint, you're actually trying to protect whatever it is that you're painting on top of. The problem that I was trying to, uh, to solve was degradation. So we were actually approached by the Navy for this one. So this wasn't a project where I had this idea and I, I tried to sell it to five or six different people. So we were actually approached with the problem that a lot of the Navy ships were undergoing degradation because of the increase in temperature. So depending on where part of the world they're operating in, uh, in direct sunlight, the surfaces of those ships can get very hot on the deck. You can imagine just for the people that are working on the deck that that's a problem, but there's the energy costs that they're worried about for air conditioning, for keeping the inside of the uh, ship's cool, but the bigger problem was actually degradation of the ship itself. And so if you think about the classic Arrhenius equation, uh, if you increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, you more or less double your reaction rate. And so you think all the different things that you do in a coating to try to improve the property so that you can protect the underlying material, you almost negate those just by the fact that it's heating up. So if you can control the temperature and keep it closer to ambient, you know, you might, let's say, uh, decrease the rate of corrosion by a factor of 10 by including some sort of corrosion inhibitor, but by just keeping the temperature down, you can actually get even bigger gains by a factor of 16 or more just by eliminating that extra rise in temperature. So one of the things that I noticed is that for a lot of applications where people were doing similar things, uh, you can actually see the properties when they're new, and then they also gave you the same properties after three years, and I can see there was a big discrepancy for a lot of these coatings, and a lot of the times, the amount of sun's energy that they were absorbing was doubling within three years. So all that energy that you put into trying to develop this coating to keep the temperature down was almost completely uh, negated. You could have gotten a Home Depot cheap coating and get, done the same thing if you didn't worry about all the degradation. So we wanted to make a coating that could last tens or maybe even a hundred years uh, without having to worry about UV degradation and all these other things. So we started looking in silicate paints. So uh, I have a lot of interest in, in silane chemistry and I, I do a lot of work with polydimethylsiloxane. We looked at that class of materials because there's a lot of very interesting properties. One is that because it's already silicon oxide, it's oxidized, so it can never burn. The highest temperature you could use it to is something like 600, uh, 760 degrees Celsius versus a polymer which melts at maybe 100 degrees Celsius or burns at 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, the hardness is much higher. When you use a silicate paint, it's almost like painting a rock on top of your surface. Uh, you, you also see things like the environmental a aspects of it as well. Most of these polymer paints require volatile organic solvents like acetone, xylene, and so on and so forth. And a lot of these are carcinogens, and most of them are greenhouse gases. But with ours, once you take our paint off, it becomes sand. The Navy's very happy that I've actually taken this so quickly. So this project is actually only a year and a half in, so we really haven't spent that much time on it. And we're about a year away from doing field tests. And also the fact that we've really kept in mind a lot of the practical aspects, things like cost, things like scale up that people don't normally think about when they first start a research project. But in the future, what I think will be really uh, key and interesting, I think, are the high temperature properties. There are a lot of uh, exhaust pipes and a lot of engines and a lot of things on ships and automotive and aircraft which go to very high temperatures. And so being able to have a paint like this which you could use at room temperature, but then also you could use the same exact paint on all these high temperature applications, applications with wear, we're already set for those. We'll, we'll, we'll knock that out of the ballpark once we go there. Mm -hmm.